Hey, James, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. So what do you make of, uh, we saw this post from the CDC today, and it's like, I uh, weren't sure how to feel about that. How should we Yeah, feel I think that? a lot of people have that reaction. How should we feel about that? Uh, well, so a couple of things to know. Uh, the first is that it appears that this topic and, and informational uh, gathering was scheduled back in the spring of 2017. It does not appear that the CDC organized this uh, recently in response to the current a war of words between North Korea and the United States and others. Uh, th th they released that information just just very recently. Um, so, so the CDC will do this on occasion. I think the last time they addressed this topic was in 2010. So it's not like it's 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 been uh, completely uh, uh, driven by the current events or something like that. However, the timing is pretty interesting. And, of course, it comes on the heels of the U.S. Uh, military personnel. What's interesting for you about the timing, specifically? Well, I think it's, what's interesting about the timing is that it comes on the heels of the U.S. Department uh, personnel noting that we're closer to nuclear war with North Korea than at any other time. And because of the escalation of the rhetoric that's occurred between our leader and, and North Korea's leader uh, and, and by others as well. So the, the idea that the CDC may, may engage in this discussion because we periodically have to address this concern in a dangerous world is, is kind of foundational. But the fact that it's happening right now and has been publicized the way that it has suggests that there is some heightened concern that we have to engage in these kinds of preparations given the current international context. So assuming you've got smart people at the CDC who uh, aren't wanting to be alarmists, they're actually spent a lot, I mean, that, that's, they deal with a lot of things that are alarming and so they don't want to be alarmists. Right. Are they sending some kind of message to us in some way to say, hey, we need to start talking about, you know, what happens if there's a nuclear war. That's purposeful, I would seem. Well, I think that's one way to interpret it, and it's a really compelling way to interpret it, right? That not, not so much that the CDC is warning that we're having, uh, uh, we're on the brink of nuclear war, but simply uh, an effort to remind us that there are serious costs that would be incurred in the context of that kind of, uh, of development. And to remind us that we shouldn't be complacent about those things. I, I think given the, the really cavalier way that these threats have been thrown back and forth, it would not surprise me at all that that was a signal being sent by serious professionals in the health uh, community that this is a catastrophic event that we're contemplating or that, that is being uh, uh, engaged in on Twitter that, that would have real serious consequences. So if, if there's any risk at all, we need to be informing the American public on how they should best uh, protect themselves because that's our job is to mitigate the risk. That's correct. I mean, every bureaucratic organization is always going to be uh, uh, careful and risk averse when it comes to uh, these kinds of warnings. Uh, they would be remiss if they didn't plan for and engage in this kind of talk. Uh, CDC does these kinds of, of, of ground, grand rounds on a regular basis. They take up topics of interest and concern uh, about the time. They set a schedule back last spring. So it's, it's part of that, that, that general planning that all these agencies go through uh, to, to deal with contingencies as they arrive. Right now, that contingency seems pretty important. So from a political science perspective, um, or maybe an historical perspective, I assume at some point Americans understood what they were supposed to do in the event of a nuclear attack, but I think you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody that actually knows that walking down the street today. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right, and I think that that's one of the reasons why the CDC is doing what they're doing. I think there's some other informational efforts along these lines. You know, back in the Cold War, this was something that was taught in the schools, the, you know, stop and drop, get under the desk. I can remember this in my own childhood, and, and I'm sure many of us can. Uh, but once the Cold War ended, we kind of stopped talking about those sorts of things. Uh, and, and given the current tension, uh, this public education effort is probably 
uh, necessary, at least in the eyes of these bureaucratic agencies, that would have to contend with the situation were it to, to, to accelerate into that kind of development. And the last question, do you think the actions of the CDC and telegraphing their, uh, what they're trying to do, teach people to be safe in a nuclear um, attack, is, could that be viewed as being irresponsible in any way, or do you feel like they're doing the responsible thing? I, I think it's. I think it's the responsible thing. Uh, the, the, the release that the CDC put out uh, emphasized unlikely. It emphasized routine. Some of the further following up information suggested the same thing. I think it's responsible because they are the ones responsible for dealing with the potential fallout from this. And I, no pun intended there, uh, from this situation. Uh, and and it would be irresponsible not to be engaged in that planning. Uh, it, it does strike me as a signal, though, as you suggested, that we should be really clear about the dangers that such uh, uh, events, such actions entail, and, and maybe a warning not to be quite so cavalier with the uh, brandishing of these weapons and threats. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time on this Friday, and uh, You're very well. hopefully there won't be anything to uh, prepare for over the weekend. Yeah, that's exactly what I <laughs> hope to. Thank you very much.